special guest uh, joining us from New York this morning, someone who's been speaking to Republic TV in the course of uh, this COVID continuous coverage from India and the world. Uh, Dr. Rajweet Rohit is an associate professor at the Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City. Uh, good morning from Mumbai, Dr. Rajweet, and good evening in New York. First of all, what's the situation in New York? Uh, is it stabilizing now? So uh, good morning to your viewers. Good morning, Ranjan, and thank you for having me on the air. Uh, the situation is stabilizing in New York. Uh, the numbers are coming down probably by about 20 percent. We no longer have a fear of being short of ventilators and patients dying because we don't have ventilators. Uh, we have enough doctors. Uh, and a lot of the uh, doctors were redeployed, specialists were redeployed to cover ICU patients. Uh, and that is no longer happening. So they're going back to their specialties. Uh, I think we've gone past the peak. Uh, the sort of the raw fear of death is receding and uh, we're starting to uh, slowly see light at the end of the tunnel. So uh, we're not out of the woods yet and I'm uh, still a little concerned about a second bump occurring uh, as people go outside. Uh, but I think clearly the worst is over um, and we've sort of survived. Yeah. Well, 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 Dr. Rajvi, let me come straight to what Don, uh, Donald Trump, the U.S. president, has been saying. And I'm quoting from uh, today's news briefing. It was a pretty rocky one where he left suddenly and he has made a statement and I want a medical perspective on that. He says, a government homeland official has revealed that uh, the results of tests that showed sunlight and ultraviolet rays helped kill the coronavirus. Now, this is coming after the hydroxychloroquine episode. Now, medically, what do we know? I mean, we just don't know enough. If I can tell you that we know that ultraviolet rays also kill people with skin cancer and all sorts of uh, other problems such as skin burns. Uh, so uh, there's absolutely no data on this and it's uh, unfortunate and sad in some ways that the president sort of speaks his mind uh, without having any scientific knowledge of what he's saying. Uh, we're stuck in a situation where a lot of people follow his advice, whether it's legitimate or not, and a lot of people are going to suffer the consequences of it. So uh, we just don't have data on this. Uh, clearly, we do have data that UV rays will hurt people uh, if the people expose it and themselves to it. So I would be very careful uh, about this and about listening to the president when you really should be listening to your doctor instead. Yeah. And, and uh, a comment made on disinfectants, on spraying of disinfectants, whether it was, uh, uh, you know, because there is a debate around uh, disinfectants and spraying of these disinfectants uh, that's, that's uh, taking place around the world. Now, what do you make of it? I mean, he actually considered ingesting disinfectants, uh, which I think is completely insane. Uh, and I think it's, I mean, clearly disinfectants have a role in this. Uh, and it, that role involves uh, cleaning any metal surfaces in your house that might be exposed to others, cleaning uh, things that you think could have uh, could potentially have a risk of exposure. That role does not involve, however, uh, anything inside your body and the disinfectant. That's just not the body, the way the body works. Uh, I think he's I even I don't I don't even think Trump believes this. I think he was just speaking off the top of his head. And I pray that no one follows his advice. It's extremely dangerous uh, and something that. Uh, no one should ever consider doing. Yeah. Uh, you know, Dr. Rajveer, uh, let, coming back to the numbers and, and America's, uh, you know, the sheer number of cases is alarming. Now, here in India, we had an update this morning and we have the number on our screens as well. That's uh, 24,506. That's the total number of cases. Uh, a country of 1.3 billion. Of course, uh, those numbers may rise, but... Uh, Nothing compared to the numbers in America. As of this morning, 9.25 lakh. You're closing, you're inching towards uh, a million cases at this rate. And over 52,000 yeah. deaths already. Now, there is a concern over opening up cities and states at a time like this. And what we are calling the second boom. Uh, what do you make of it? Well, I have to tell you, I think these numbers are an underestimate of the actual number of cases. Yeah. Uh, so there have been a few studies right now looking at uh, the prevalence of the disease, and there's been some completely shocking numbers. 
In New York City, for example, uh, they looked at antibodies uh, on 3,000 randomly selected patients, and they found that in the city, 21% of patients had antibodies uh, to the disease. In New York City alone, if you project those numbers out, that would mean 2.4 million people in New York uh, have uh, had COVID or in the past and now have the antibodies. There's been other studies that have shown, for example, in California, 4 to 5 percent of the population already has antibodies. Uh, and in another study, they found that 14 percent of pregnant women presenting uh, to, for deliveries uh, to their doctor had active COVID, meaning they had nasopharyngeal swabs done and they discovered COVID in their bodies. So I think the 900,000 number is a dramatic underestimate of the actual prevalence of the disease. And I wouldn't be surprised right now using these studies if we sort of correlate it to the rest of the population if that we have more than four or five million people in America who either have asymptomatic COVID who just haven't been tested or had COVID and now have recovered. Uh, and that's something that uh, makes treatment and management complicated because uh, if 2.4 million people in New York City, in a, a city of about 10 million people, have uh, already developed COVID and have antibodies, and these people potentially could go out and uh, interact with the population. Uh, the concern is right now, we just haven't done adequate testing, and uh, the test for the antibodies is not a very accurate test yet. And so we're still trying to validate that test to make sure it's a good test. Uh, you know, the test itself may be over or underestimating the population. Uh, I think India has uh, done the right thing and locked down the country much, much earlier. Yeah. America still doesn't have a national lockdown policy, and, and Trump is encouraging some states, uh, democratic states, to go out and actually, you know, you know state residents to go out and uh, interact. Uh, so it's been a com completely confused message from the central government, from the federal government, and from Trump. Uh, and I think that's caused this massive numbers of cases. India has been far more aggressive and far more successful, I think. Uh, and I'm hoping that these numbers of cases in India are really minuscule compared to what we're seeing in America. Yeah. Dr. Rajvi, great to speak to you as always. We'll have to take a short break yeah. at this point, but uh, we'll get you more often uh, over the course of the next few weeks so to much. speak uh, you know, on, on, on a constant basis about the situation uh, developing in America. Uh, thank you once again for speaking to Republic TV.